We have a new thing. Wow, I don't even know how to attack this. So what happens when you buy used? Ah! Holy cow. That's like some next level. Y'all, if you're selling used stuff, that's terrible for lighting. Take it easy. Hey! Another bag. That's what we wanted. Okay, so for those of you that do not already know this, I bought my first drone at the beginning of this year and I bought the Mavic Air 2. Now, why did I buy a drone? I can hardly remember. I remember I went and I was really into disc golf and I went to the disc golf course and I wanted drone footage of the holes because that's just a thing you do in golf and in disc golf. And there's another guy in the area that had a drone. I messaged him on Facebook. I said, hey, let's go get some drone shots of the disc golf course. I thought the drone was super duper cool. So within like the next week, I had bought the Mavic Air 2. Now I'm upgrading my drone to the Air 2S because I have started shooting filming weddings this year as you know if you've been following along on the journey on the channel which by the way if you haven't been now is a great time to subscribe but I finally had a run in at a wedding where I was flying a drone in the evening out at a lake side venue and the image just did not look very good and I was like oh this is why when I was doing all that research for drones I ended up ultimately going with the Air 2 because it was more affordable than like the Mavic Air 2S the 3 was out at the time. This was before the Mini 3 Pro came out. That's around the time you're looking. So I was back and forth between the Mini 2 and the Air 2. And uh, actually, I went with the Mini 2 first, and then there were all sorts of shipping issues. Anyway, now I have the Air 2S. So I bought this used very recently, and I loved ha -ha, that it came with this case primarily. I mean, that itself might make it worth it. So, see what we've got here. Now this is the Fly More combo with some extras, as far as I understand. So I'm looking in here, we got ourselves another standard DJI controller. Let me make some more room on the desk here. Okay, so we've got this guy right here. Got some ND filters, it looks like, so that's good. Four batteries in here, which is awesome. Five, actually, because there's one in the drone. We have the actual drone in here, and this is another thing I'm actually excited to get with this purchase that I never got around to buying for my Air 2 is this little propeller guard. I always wanted one of those. I actually kind of just like set my Air 2 down the way you're not supposed to all the time. Whoops. Oh well, how was this on there? And we've got chargers, chargers, charging stuff. So cool, that's basically it. And the case itself, like I already said, is a fantastic addition to all of this. So we are going to have to work on getting this registered with the FAA because I'm a rule follower and I do stuff like that. And just seeing how it compares to the Air 2. Open up here. All right, is this charged? Now we've got my controller and we're gonna see if I can just hook this up to this drone. I am planning to get it outside. Look at this dude. Come on, grab it. Come on, focus. All right, we're gonna update some firmware now is what we're gonna do. All right, so I think it is going to be time for us to take this over where we can test it out. So stay tuned. <laughs> Alrighty, so I went out and I flew both drones around quite a bit. And thankfully it got pretty nice while I was there. Like the sky opened up a little bit so you could see it. It was all clouds before. So we're gonna take a look at some of that footage here. I already have it all offloaded onto the computer. I looked at it a little bit, but I'm just gonna kind of look at it more <laughs> and talk over it with you right there. So you can kind of see what's going on in my, or here, I guess what's going on in my head. You'll see it too, which reminds me. I have to actually record the screen for all of this to work. And then after I was up at the sports complex there, I also went over to another park in my area later at night just to look at some of the low light capabilities. And also just as a final side note, I did clean off the cameras, or I guess it would be the lens of both drones before I went to do the low light shoots later in the evening. So if you happen to notice, I don't think I could really see much of a difference, but if you happen to notice that they look a little bit better, it actually might be for that reason. It's obviously not going to look better because of low light. Okay, so I 
open up Resolve and I'm in a project that I keep on here that's just called Playground. By the way, this is a fun thing that I learned lately, but I started doing this in Premiere right before I switched over to Resolve. But just having a project called Playground is what I do just so I have somewhere to throw all this stuff because I hate when I just want to like test out some footage or chop something up super quick and not even save the project. I just put it in Playground and then I export it. So I'm going to navigate my way to this footage. So let's take this one for example. So this one you can see is really dark and it's actually like super grainy too. It's just that image quality quite frankly sucks. I did also use the Air 2 a few minutes, like 10 minutes before I put up the Air 2S because like daylight was burning and I was like, well, if I'm going to have one of them be just a little bit too much or I'm going to have one of them be even more in the dark than the other, I might as well let the Air 2 go first. So this is um, around sunset. It was just really cloudy, but you can see that that's not good footage. 306 here, I had brightened the ISO up to 16,000, I believe was the difference that I made here. And you can see that it's bright at least, but still super grainy, super, like, super not clear. If you look at some of the trees down here, kind of, it just, I still don't like it. And this is why I wasn't liking the Mavic Air 2. And then for 307, the adjustment that I made with this one right here, and as you can see, it does look a little bit better, but this is with <laughs> that person, a person right there was like not inside the white line. <laughs> what you can see with this one, this one does look a little bit better, but it's still like these trees are still crazy soft. So again, so this one is, I believe, just in auto mode instead of pro mode. Or no, it's not in auto mode, but it's out of cine like and back into like standard color. Mavic Air 2, if you don't already know, does not have D-Log, so I didn't do anything in D-Log on the Mavic Air 2 because you can't. All right, now let's take a look at some of this Air 2S footage. So I tried to really take some of the same shots. So this one is also very grainy. I believe this was, oh, and you can see I bumped the ISO up in the middle of the shot on this one. So this actually looks really similar to the Air 2, but this was in D-Log, I believe, which probably does not do, it probably does even worse in low light if you're shooting in a log profile. So this should be at 800 right around here. This should be at about 1600 right around there. Looks about the same as before. And then I tried it again, and I think here, it looks like what I did now. See, that starts to look pretty okay. It's very dark, as you can see, obviously, but nothing's overexposed. Coming back out of that, and it's a lot cleaner of a shot. God. And then this one, I want to say, yeah, this one all the way through, I finally bumped the ISO down to where it was saying I had no overexposed parts of the image. And in this one, I actually do like kind of all the subject matter along with the sky in the image. Now, obviously you get out here and you can't really see the, but you can actually see like this tree right here. You can see that they are clearer in the Air 2S footage. So let me pull this one into the color tab real quick. Okay, so you can see here, this is obviously, and if you don't know how to read these, I barely do either, so just bear with me. Everything is super low here. So the first thing I'm gonna do just for fun is, mm, well, I don't wanna bring up the shadows too much, but I want them to sit right around there. I guess really what I wanna bring up is the highlights. Okay, so you can see that if I start to really bring up the highlights, the sky goes, the sky's gone. It's, it's like, oh, okay, goodbye sky. And I'd say right about here-ish, the image looks pretty okay. I mean, I'm not mad with that. Yeah, farther out here, you can kind of see what's going on, okay? And then of course you can do some like actual curves and create a little bit more contrast. But yeah, I don't think that that's awful. So that's low light capabilities. Now let's look back here. I want to look at some of these clips that I got. Here's a clip I got of the lights. The reason I'm shooting the lights is because it looks a lot better if you're actually shooting something. When I first got my drone, I used to go out and just fly around in the sky and see the cool landscape. Kind of like that last shot we were just looking through. It's a lot more fun when you actually have a subject to shoot. So now when I go out and I'm just doing tests and things of that nature, I actually try to shoot like a flag or lights like this or track a car or something. Usually I don't just track somebody else's car. That's kind of creepy, but you get my point. So I think that this shot looks okay the way that it is. I mean, that grass is very green, right? And nothing seems super soft to me in this image. I think it all looks pretty good. And that's coming from the Air 2. So now if we compare that against the Air 2S, I did a similar shot. Would you believe? And this is in 
D log. All right, so I'm going to pull the D log shot into the timeline here for this. Let's go over to the color. All right, and so the first thing that I could do, I'm going to try to pick an angle that has a lot of nice color here. Ironically, the backside here probably has a lot of color because you got the building, you've got the sky, you've got all this type of stuff. Is I want to try to convert this to Rec 709. Now, the way that you do that is you put the color space transform effect on here. You choose Rec 709 for your outputs. Okay, which you can see makes it almost like you turned the shadows way up. But then you choose DJI Gamut and ah, stop, don't play backwards. That's not what I want you to do. And you choose DJI D log. Okay, and that's supposed to give you accurate color. This clearly does not. So I have to figure out what I'm doing with that. Probably has everything to do with the way I shot it. I mean, the color actually looks kind of sick. I don't like hate the color, but it still doesn't quite look right if you ask me so that's where you have to start making adjustments here now another thing i think about these shots in particular is that this red of the track going around is super just red and a lot of the grass is also crazy green so that makes me think that if i were to come into these guys that's hue v hue hue versus saturation you can see we have a lot of this right here right which that's talking about the sky yeah, that's what it's seen so much of. So actually, I almost don't mind pulling that up a little bit because I freaking love skies. Okay, and then if I wanted the sky to be a little bit deeper of a blue, I guess I could come into here, pull this over to here. Ooh, that makes it very green. Oh, and hue versus hue. I want hue versus saturation. Anyway, let's also try to take some of these greens that we have, which it looks like is right around here. Some of that, and if I kill that, just a smidgy, because we don't want it like that, that's for sure. Here pull down some of those greens and then pull down some of the red so that's it i'm just gonna stop right there i mean i'm not a colorist so i don't want to go too deep into this video acting like i am what i'm gonna play around with it some more let me know if you think the air 2s was worth the upgrade especially for someone like me that is just using them to the extent that i know how to use them anyway and if you have any other tips or suggestions for me i appreciate those in the comments too if you like the filmmaking and the video creation and whatnot let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you soon.